Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Channel Vision webinar sponsored by NHC with special guest VMware SD-WAN by VeloCloud. This is Channel Vision editor Gerald Baldino, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today, we'll be talking about SD-WAN and why it's your moneymaker for 2020. Over the next hour, we'll discuss the evolution of SD-WAN, some hot applications that customers and prospects are looking for, and VMware SD-WAN by VeloCloud. We'll also provide some migration examples and discuss the benefits of partnering with an SD-WAN provider uh, like NHC. Joining us today is Chris Susi, Director of Product Management at NHC, and Kishan Ramaswamy, who is Product Ma Marketing Manager at VMware. If you have any questions during the presentation, please submit them through the Q&A window located at the bottom of the Zoom platform. A Q&A session will commence at the end of the presentation. At this point, I'd like to turn the webinar over to our presenters to begin. Hi, thank you so much for that introduction. And again, uh, good morning and good afternoon or good evening to folks who are joining us today. Thank you for taking time from your busy schedule. Um, just like we said, I'm going to talk initially about um, the VMware SD-WAN solution. I want to give you, before I jump straight away into the solution, I'd like to just paint the picture in terms of what the market really looks like for SD-WAN as a whole, and then we'll dive into our solutions. And then I'll hand it over to my colleague, Chris, uh, who can basically talk about the partnership that we have with NHC and how NHC would be the right choice of vendor for you. With that said, let's just jump straight into the slides. I know this is a bit of a busy slide, but let me walk you through it. On the far left, uh, the, rather the first two columns are a survey or an industry research by uh, Frost and Sullivan. And on the right-hand side one is by Quadrant Knowledge Solutions. If you look at the first column, the market projections from 2070 to 2023 were roughly uh, in the order of a you know, 40 to 49 to 50% uh, uh, CAGR. What it also shows you is that while the market was slow to adopt in 2017, about $300 million in revenue, in 2018, the first half of 2018, it's the second small line that you see there, is basically at almost 2017 terms. So it was already at $250 million. The projection for the second half of 2018 was $271 million. I can tell you the actuals for 2018 far exceeded both those numbers combined, and it landed at about $583 million. So you can see from 2017 where it was 300, we jumped to almost uh, you know, 585 million in, in the second year. And as we looked at the projections all the way up to 2023, we expect this to almost hit a three and a half to $4 billion market. That is phenomenal, just uh, you know, projections on that and project uh, a growth in that particular technology. The second column talks about the number of sites that will go SD-WAN. So moving away from traditional WAN to an SD-WAN, again, from a forecast, you can see that uh, about almost a 40% cumulative growth. You're looking at by 2023 to have um, almost uh, a revenue in the order of, again, you know, just by moving over by about 700, uh, about $700,000 million. So it's a phenomenal growth over there as well. And lastly, a more current report from Quadrant Knowledge Solutions uh, talks about a revenue forecast from 2019 to 2024 in the order of almost 18-ish billion dollars and an accumulative growth of about 54%. So all of these data points and many more are, are, have a common message that SD-WAN is here to stay and it's, you're gonna experience a phenomenal growth within this technology itself. So what's really driving the need for SD-WAN? What we're seeing in the industry, and I'm sure a lot of you who are, who are also in this industry are seeing similar trends, is one, cloud. Cloud is driving a lot of need for, uh, for enterprises to look at a different strategy. We are seeing more and more enterprises move their applications to the cloud. We're actually seeing customers moving out, getting out of private data centers and moving them over to cloud. So that transition is, 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 is a significant portion of driving the technology refresh itself. We'll talk about traditional WAN, the challenges at the end of the slide, but 
as you can start to relate, a traditional van which relies on backhauling traffic to the data center and egressing does not scale very well for an environment where you have a need to access cloud applications directly from each one of those branches. There's the next generation of technology that is coming in. Organizations are moving away from a uh, central hardware-centric model to a more um, uh, a, a, a more new age technology where they really are looking to bring up services on demand. They're able to just uh, ship, drop ship units, plug it in, and everything comes back online. So they're really looking to move to a solution where they can bring up branches in days rather than basically look at months to bring up a site. Automation is key. Again, there's a, a general shift in the technology and the market itself. They're done with a device-centric configuration, moving more towards a central uh, automation or a management platform. And of course, it's very important for all of these organizations, CIOs are all tasked to ensure that they get better ROI in all of this technology that they deploy. So these are the four major pillars that is driving this transition. So if you look at uh, SD-WAN and more specifically uh, VeloCloud solution, you'll see that it does address and goes beyond uh, you know, addressing these, these common requirements itself. But let's just look at the architecture and map it to those requirements. You'll see that you know, the, the, the entire solution is based upon a controller. So you basically have an SD-WAN orchestrator. Uh, we call that VeloCloud orchestrator, also known as VCO. That's where, as an admin, you would go in, you create your templates, you create your profiles, you would define what policies you'd like, and then that would push those, that information down to all the end branch devices. The branch devices that are deployed are called edges. So we have those, and those can be physical, or they can be virtual. That's the flexibility that we can provide. Um, so, and again, within a physical platform itself, with anything that ranges from a you know, 200 Mbps of throughput all the way to a, almost 10 plus gigs, and you can go more. So a lot of flexibility to the end user. Now, the third component, we'll focus a little bit more about that, uh, are, is known as the cloud gateways, also known as Vela Cloud Gateways. These are virtual instances that are strategically deployed across the globe so that our, you know, customers can basically access SaaS applications as quickly as possible with a great customer experience. Well, like I said earlier, we'll, we'll dwell more about the cloud gateways in the next few slides. But that's the key, those are the three key components of the VMware SD-WAN solution. So that brings us to this interesting concept. You have you know, the data centers that have moved to the cloud, you have applications that have moved to the cloud, you have storage applications moved to the cloud, and this is the first time you'll actually see networking move to the cloud. By basically deploying those cloud gateways, we've transitioned or transformed the entire industry itself. So what are these cloud gateways? So these cloud gateways, like I said, are deployed across the globe. They can basically be set in a co-location uh, environment. Uh, they can basically uh, sit in a telco pop. They can sit in our partners, uh, can they basically go ahead and deploy like NFC does, and, and everyone. So every way you, can, uh, you think you deploy a virtual instance, we have a presence there. Just to put this in perspective, we're more than 2,000 of these instances deployed across the globe and growing. We are, we are present in more than 100 plus pops across the, across the globe, and we actually get more than 10 billion of data per day that goes through our gateways. So what do these do, and what, you know, how do they work with the edges? So if you look on the left-hand side, you'd be in a typical branch. A branch would deploy an edge, like I said, physical or virtual, it doesn't matter. And these edges have the intelligence to go and connect to their respective gateways. The, the, the simplest logic would be, okay, let me go find the gateway that's nearest to me, and I'm gonna establish a secure connection to that gateway. These gateways typically reside in the same pop or same colo 
where you have a SaaS application, right? So there's really zero latency between the gateway and the application that you want to access. And, there, and if there's any impediments, they would be on that last mile connection between the edge and the gateway. Now, because we connect to the gateway uh, through a secure manner, we also have technology that is in place that allows you to remediate traffic. So if there's tra you know, packet loss, jitter, delay, we have technology that is in place to recover from such impediments. And that's why a lot of times the end users don't even realize there's a network impediment. So to, to, to conclude on a little bit more on, on the gateways, first of all, they provide it as a service, so you can just actually go in and consume it. There are different flexible options for those. Uh, we have a lot of partners who also host these gateways on the behalf of the customer. Um, then, they, of course, they can scale. Like I said, we have 2,000 of these. Uh, it, it, since these are virtual instances and they are multi-tenant, you can automatically just pin each one of these as and when required. And from an automation and control perspective, these have just one-click deployment options. We've simplified that greatly. And I've talked about that special sauce that runs between the edges and the gateways that ensures that we can recover from impediments. That is basically called dynamic multipath optimization. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the next few slides. But that's the big value out of what the gateways bring. And again, I can tell you this, nobody else in the industry can do that. So what is dynamic multipath optimization? So, like I said, there could be impediments in that last mile link. When DMPO runs between the edge and the gateway, we take care of those impediments. And how do we do it? First of all, we continuously monitor all the links that are connecting those two sites. And if we see that a particular type of traffic is going through that link and that link does not meet the minimum SLAs, we will immediately switch over to the link that meets the required SLAs. That's the first thing that we do. The second thing, the switching is done in a sub-second manner. And very importantly, it's done on a per packet. So take this example that you see on the left over here. It's a voice traffic, which is susceptible to jitter, delays, and packet loss. When you send that traffic across a link which has impediments, we're able to ensure that on a per packet, we can switch uh, the, the traffic over and ensure that on the remote side, we can basically put all of that together and still be within the round trip delays that, that a voice traffic would require. And that's the beautiful thing about this. That, and it's very important, again, I reiterate the sub-second uh, nature of it, because a lot of our vendors would do, um, uh, would, would basically do on a per flow, and in a per flow, and, and you know, you can't really switch until a new flow is generated, which means that existing voice traffic would, would hit those impediments. And we have technology for on-demand remediation as well. So if you have a single link and you don't have much choice and that is experiencing, let's say, um, drops, we can basically predict the traffic that needs to go out and send additional traffic out to that link and we can remediate across from there as well. So that's an important piece. And lastly, orchestration. I mentioned that everything in the, in the SD-WAN solution from VeloCloud has an orchestrator. You start from there, you basically go into the orchestrator, you define your profiles, and you push all of that, you make changes through the orchestrator. And because of such an architecture, if any time you want to um, make any changes, you're not driving down to the site, connecting to the box, and executing a bunch of CLIs. Those are done. You're going to go into the orchestrator, you make the changes, and that gets pushed out. In this way, you can make one change at a profile basis and have multiple devices attached to that same profile. So once you make that change and you push it out, all those devices can get that change in one click. Then you also have, from an onboarding perspective, we do support, of course, zero-touch deployments. It's all about the case of taking a device, going to site, plugging it in, and let that device call back home. And there's a lot of technology that runs behind it. We've taken care of that as well. So just to conclude a little bit on that, um, 
So we have basically uh, the SD-WAN solution. It simplifies WAN operations. We just talked about the whole uh, day simplification of day zero and day one operations to hold zero touch capability. We have the ability to, uh, you know, to scale through automation through our VCOs. We have the ability to uh, provide information of what type of traffic that flows within the devices and how we can prioritize that traffic. So we have that capability as well. It helps with ease of cloud adoption. Basically, we have use of our gateways, allows those edges to directly talk to the gateways and from the gateways hop onto a cloud service and you do not have to anymore backhaul all your traffic back out. Everything is secured at the edge and at the gateway level itself. And of course, it leads us to the last thing, uh, choices and edge security. It has end-to-end -end segmentation. So it would, depending upon the vertical you are in, retail, healthcare, an enterprise organization, you're going to need a segmentation at the edge level itself. You might want to keep your guest Wi-Fi separate from your corporate traffic, we ensure that you can do that. We also have the capability to host additional security VNFs, whether it's a Palo Alto VNF or a Checkpoint VNF, you can host it. And that way you get the best of breed from security and SD-WAN services as well. Of course, we have also cloud, uh, cloud web security services also uh, integrated with the solution. So with all of those components that I mentioned, this is why Gartner rates us where we are. We are far more, uh, you know, uh, from a completeness of vision, we, we, we basically uh, surpass everybody and we're based uh, up there uh, in the top right in terms of uh, ability to execute and you know, part of the uh, leaders column as well. And before I turn it over to Chris, uh, I'd basically also like to show you that when Gartner uh, releases their critical capabilities for Vantage, we're rated highest in both mid-size, large uh, van deployments as well, and we're there in the top five when it comes to a small retail footprint. So I don't want to take away too much of Chris's time. I do want to turn it over to Chris to walk us through basically the solution with NHC itself. So Chris, it's over to you now. Thanks, Keyshawn. I appreciate that. Hi, everyone. I'm Christopher Susi with, uh, with NHC, um, Director of Product and Brand at NHC. Uh, Keyshawn, you did a great job explaining the, the VM technology uh, and kind of the market leadership that, that VM or Velo Club by VMware holds in the market. Uh, very much appreciate you leading us through that. Uh, now that you guys have heard uh, about the technology from from the expert, the technology behind our managed SD WAN or our managed WAN solution. Uh, I'm going to take you down a relatively brief journey about who NHC is and and share some case studies with you, and then we can go ahead and conclude. So I'm um, first to to really start out showing uh, and explaining who NHC is. We're going to share a little video. So hopefully this goes off uh, without a hitch. Today's businesses use piles of communication services. And this leads to piles of invoices, portals, dashboards, and support teams. How much time would businesses gain if they only dealt with one provider for all their businesses' communication needs? NHC is the communication stack provider for any organization in any vertical. We stack our services into three simple layers. The network layer gives customers fast, scalable connectivity anywhere in the country. Just name the need and we'll provide dedicated public or private network. Next, we overlay cloud native applications that collaborate like a modern network should. Unified communications, voice over IP, contact center, SD-WAN, security, and disaster recovery enrich and empower every business. And the managed layer proactively manages the whole stack so that customers can focus on growing their business. NHC obsesses over the partner and customer experience. Independent channel partners choose to sell our services because they trust us and their customers trust us. That trust is sacred. To make the burden of finding and managing your technology disappear, 
come stack with us. So thank you for, sh for uh, watching that video. Hopefully that explained who we are, but I'm going to go ahead and share a couple slides that kind of further delve into the who and HC and why. So first of all, as you learned from the video, we are a communication stack provider. I would argue that we are the first of its kind uh, in the country where uh, we are truly, you know, network and carrier agnostic while still providing a, a great deal of um, services over the top of any network around the country. So CSP, communication stack provider, and some of the, some of the differentiators uh, of NHC being a CSP is that we are a true single source stack provider for all network connectivity, again, anywhere in the country. Um, and that we're layering on top of those network connections, whether they're public or private, cloud-centric or cloud-native overlay services. And today we're talking about SD-WAN, but that doesn't just stop there. Uh, we're seeing a huge play this year and, and really the end of last year too in the contact center space as well as our redefined UCAS space, uh, both working in tandem and then as well independently. Uh, and then finally, the management layer of all of those services, whether it's NHC or if it's the end customer or if it's NHC in our, our channel partner and the end customer, uh, NHC does provide all of the management for those services uh, with visibility to, to both the end customer and our partner. Uh, we, we're truly customer focused and we're focused on the customer experience, the user experience. We try to approach all of our sales uh, with a custom tailored solution, whether that's an independent site, an SMB customer, or a large enterprise distributed uh, customer. Uh, we're, we're truly focused on that customer experience and, and we try to tailor the right solution for them. And then we back that up by a real project management experience, again, to, to further underscore uh, and execute a proper customer experience. So a lot of people preach project management or, pro or, or preach good support habits and so on. We live that. And I'm going to show you a slide on, on what, that sh what that looks like. Um, and regardless of the service, regardless of how many layers of the stack so a customer is subscribing to or purchasing from us, uh, we provide enterprise grade support to the customer. So stateside 24 by 7, 365 uh, support. Uh, on all of our services, again, regardless of whether they're an enterprise size customer or a single site uh, SMB or sub SMB. Uh, and we, we provide all of our customers as well as our partners with very user-friendly systems or really one interface uh, for the customer and the partner to log into. And we, we frame that as MAP and that allows them, that stands for Management Access Portal and that allows them access into the visibility of their various network access types, as well as our overlay services and then inventory and billing management. And as well, they can make payments, which our finance group really loves. So, uh, so one invoice, one service number, one stateside support team uh, for all services around the country. Uh, there's nobody in the, in, the, in the telco or communication sector like NHC as a communication stack provider. So again, our stack Really, it's fundamentally three easy layers, and every service in the communication industry really falls into each of these or one of these. So from a network perspective, that's connection from the physical site to, uh, to a network, whether it's cloud, public, or private, overlay services, and then the managed layer. So from a network connectivity, we're rolling fiber coast to coast, broadband coast to coast, DSL, obviously within certain regions, uh, where it's available because it's not available from every pop. Uh, wireless LTE today, soon it'll be 5G. Satellite as well as fixed wireless. And we have fixed wireless agreements with a number of different providers around the country. So whether it's a regional fixed wireless or if it's a big, you know, wide uh, nationwide uh, fixed wireless plan like, you know, uh, CenturyLink or, or uh, Windstream and so on. Our overlay services, this is really where the market has been going and we'll continue to add more services in here such as SaaS and so on. Uh, but today we're selling IP voice, so SIP uh, services as well as IP POTS and POT, uh, IP PRI, uh, UCAS uh, with collaboration. Contact Center is a huge growth for us as well as SD-WAN 
and then security. Uh, and security is a big wide area in terms of uh, monitoring and protection and just you know monitoring and notification in, in the form of say like an alien vault and so on. And then our managed services, fundamentally simple, very complex on the back end in terms of how we manage that and how we, how we show the customers what we're doing and, and what their various options are. So from a managed voice, and that's not only UCAS, but that's also uh, our VoIP services, again, SIP and IP POTS, IP PRI, uh, managed WAN, uh, firewall, and, and overall managed security. So, some support differentiators that I think really speak volumes about how we handle our partners and our customer experiences, the overall uh, user experience. Uh, it's fundamental to us, but not everybody is doing it in the marketplace, which is unfortunate. I mean, from a, from a support perspective, both pre-sale and post-sale on day two, uh, initiation with the customer contact and the partner contact is critical. Uh, we create a, a solid plan uh, going into the service delivery as well as on the day two support side. And we're making certain that there are variable control points within that plan uh, that the customer has visibility into. Uh, and then we go ahead and execute that plan. And we make certain that whatever the plan is, whether it's adapted and changed uh, leading up to the, the day of deployment and certainly after, the, after deployment, that we're executing on that plan to a T. Uh, and then if there, is a, uh, if there is a change, we're executing on those changes and we're transparent in those changes in that execution. We invoice very rapidly and very clean. We're super proud of that. Our billing team is probably, I would argue, the best in the, in the business. We provide a very clean, easy to read, easy to see bill. Uh, and we, 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 we get it done rapidly. So that's very important to our partners. Uh, so that way they can get paid faster. Uh, we can get paid faster, the customer service or the customer's services are deployed fast and that's what the customer expects and needs. So, and then we, we top that off with a management protocol where, you know, we're, we're monitoring services, we're notifying the customer through automation in terms of, you know, whether there's network uh, events that are occurring or whether it's a voice or a data event, uh, we're communicating properly and effectively with our, with our customers and our partners. So, so these are critical differentiators uh, on the support side from an NHC perspective. Uh, from a project management perspective, specific to managing deployments and managing uh, customer relationships through a deployment or through a move out or a change or so on, it's very, very simple for us. Communicating both with the partner uh, and with the customer, those are equal communication points. Uh, we're pulling in our sales and quote desk team if there are any sort of changes with the product or with the with the solution uh, that was designed for the customer, uh, our provisioning uh, units, as well as our logistics engineering and our escalation units are all in sync with regards to the, the status and the timelines within the project. Uh, so full visibility internally, as well as externally to again, both the partner and the customer. Rapid billing and communication on the first bill. So we're sending out that first bill. Um, and then we're communicating from our billing group with the customer on that first invoice to do, uh, you know, either some sort of a review or just to find out, you know, um, you know, from a quality assurance perspective, uh, what their thoughts are on the bill, if they have any questions and so on. Our customer service and then our D2 support teams are aligned with that project management strategy uh, and fully aware of, of services that are going live online um, and they're available 24 by seven. So we, you know, we pride ourselves on being able to service nationwide, coast to coast, you know, any, any network, any requirement, any solution, but we back that up with a very committed project management cycle. And that's led by Paul Lenick, who's our director of operations. Uh, so he does, his team does a fantastic job. Uh, so I'm going to share with you a couple of case studies that focus on really customers that are bringing on services that, that fall into all layers of the stack. Uh, but we're focused on these two customers because of their involvement in SD-WAN. Uh, so I'm going to share with you the customer profile, uh, the challenges, the solution, the result, and then I'm going to share with you who the customer was afterwards. So this first customer, uh, they're a single site customer. Uh, they're a very well-known uh, nationwide TV and radio broadcast show. Uh, they were leveraging, at the time of acquisition, they were leveraging legacy telco services for both 
uh, TDM voice connectivity as well as uh, data connectivity. Um, and some of their challenges uh, that they, when, when we acquired the relationship through our partner, and it was a, it was a, a large regional partner that we acquired them through, uh, they were relocating their studio in less than 60 days. Uh, they were relocating within the same uh, area that they were existing before, so in the same town or city. Um, they were experiencing some troubles with the current LEC that they were operating with, that they were subscribing to, that uh, was really, really challenging for them to be able to reload their services. So their entire process was very, very slow, and they were worried that they were not going to be able to meet uh, their relocation needs. Uh, there were further, the LEC was unresponsive. Uh, and they were, you know, procuring legacy uh, services from them. So that was very difficult to, for the customer to go ahead and manage and from a bunch of different providers. Uh, they had a IT service provider that was managing some of their, some of their data, their internal LAN network and so on. Uh, and some of the requirements that they had, they really needed a redundant voice uh, for their live broadcasts. So the, the, this customer is broadcasting live nationwide um, every single day of the week, or well, five days a week rather, uh, and they really require that redundant voice uh, with a certain level of QoS for that application security or uh, application uh, performance, I should say. And then additionally, they wanted and required some redundant access outside of that, that fell outside of the LEC footprint. So, um, Probably a common customer profile. This again, this customer was a single site customer. Uh, so our solution was first, uh, we deployed redundant uh, network uh, connectivity uh, uh, layers or, or access layer uh, to them, uh, both in the resold LEC BRI based off of some of their systems that they had on site. Uh, we deployed uh, 500 meg fiber that was resold from the Crown Castle network uh, and then we also deployed uh, private access from our voice network uh, to, uh, to solve for their, their voice QoS requirement within for, for their broadcast. Uh, we deployed a, our, our SD-WAN solution powered by VeloCloud, by VMware, uh, to prioritize their applications, both from a voice redundancy, uh, if, it, if the voice was traveling off of our private access onto the 500 meg uh, Crown Castle, and then for an overall voice quality assurance uh, to make certain that calls were still able to go out and come in for their live broadcasts. Uh, the SD-WAN also provided an active active state for all their access types. So for both the 500 meg, our private access, as well as the, um, the LTE access that we rolled as a complete last resort, uh, kind of an emergency insurance. Uh, it was in an active active state. Um, and then while in the active active state, we're also providing the, the proactive monitoring links for all of the statuses. And that was a proactive monitoring in that it was notifying obviously our network operations center so we could take, take action immediately if there was some sort of a network event on any of the links, but also we were communicating with the customer um, proactive alert notifications um, directly to the customer's IT, internal IT team. And then additionally, we, we rolled our, our new voice SIP uh, which is our voice product, our, our voice product, new voice SIP directly to their, to their site for, uh, for their broadcast voice source, as well as for internal business operation use. For the result, so uh, we were focused on the customer's, need, customer's needs. So we listened to them during the pre-sale uh, exploration, which actually was expedited because of the short window that we had to go ahead and deploy services for them due to their, their studio reload. Uh, we were able to deliver a variety of technologies, both from the network connectivity side, obviously fiber, and then our, our, uh, our network access, as well as LTE, and then the LEC BRIs that we, we assumed over, uh, but also in the SD-WAN and our SIP service. So the SD-WAN was completely new to this customer. Uh, so they, they hadn't been using anything like that on the edge prior to go ahead and make certain that all their links were in active, active state. Uh, we were able to deliver that technology. So we, we solved for the customer's redundancy uh, requirements and their quest in both voice and, and in their access. Uh, we assumed the control of the LEC BRI service, which was huge because we were able to put that on our invoice for them. So it was one invoice, one service provider, one network team. 
And then further, we created an on-ramp for their future cloud uh, adoption, right? Um, so we're now talking with this customer about uh, service chaining a, cl a cloud-based firewall or a firewall VNF option off of the off of the uh, the SD one of the BCE uh, on the edge. So, and then finally, uh, we delivered we ensured a quality uh, user experiencing their experience by delivering on time for their relocation, and then standing them up uh, and partnering with them. So, and this customer is the Dan Patrick Show. Uh, they're located in Connecticut. We're a proud partner of the Dan Patrick Show. And I have to put a little plug in there that they're, they air Monday, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern time on DirecTV and satellite radio. The second, excuse me, the second customer, uh, very similar needs, but uh, a, few, uh, a few different needs uh, are attached in there. So this customer is a nationwide retailer. Uh, so they have brick and mortar stores across the country, uh, as well as a very heavy presence uh, in the e-commerce um, sector, if you will, selling their products. Uh, so at the time they were leveraging legacy MPLS uh, as, as well as various regional telcos for connectivity. So broadband, local broadband, and so on. Their challenges were standardizing on the management for all their branches. So um, not every branch had a very had this had similar uh if not the same architecture uh as it came to network and voice and so on so it was very challenging for them to roll new stores and new branches uh as they you know entered into new geographic areas uh the visibility into their overall network performance and their their WAN health was was a challenge uh from based on their infrastructure their various infrastructure uh, they didn't have a strategic disaster mitigation strategy or a DR mitigation strategy uh, employed. Um, their security requirements in their market or in their business were constantly changing. So they didn't really have a good, their infrastructure didn't, didn't allow them to, to scale to those, those different security requirements easily. Uh, and then finally, they lacked... Um, you know, support the personnel support to, uh, of the infrastructure internally to go ahead and manage, um, you know, the, you know, a, a, a forklift of their network uh, and move it to, you know, a kind of a cloud based cloud on ramp network. So our solution, we replaced all of their network connectivity layers, uh, resold fiber where we had to, NHC fiber where we, where we were able to, uh, where it made sense economically. Uh, we resold broadband in the various markets in the different areas. So that's a variety of different broadband providers that we we're bringing in, whether it was Comcast or Spectrum, uh, which, by the way, um, you know, NHC, again, just to underscore any network anywhere in the country. So unlike some of the other providers where they can only sell their services in certain regions like, you know, Comcast and, and uh, Fios and so on, we can sell the Comcast in the, in the Comcast networks and we can sell the Fios and the Fios networks like we did with this customer and then the spectrum and the spectrum uh, regions uh, where it makes sense. So uh, additionally for this customer, we deployed NHC wireless LTE as well as satellite uh, via Visat. Uh, so we completely replaced all of their network connectivity layers uh, and gave them an abundance of relatively lower cost uh, public access uh, at all of their locations. Uh, we deployed uh, our NHC managed WAN solution with security, uh, and that is our, our, our Velo Cloud by VMware. And that established a cloud roadmap for them for other SaaS applications that they as a retailer want to go ahead and, and leverage, uh, both from uh, an inventory management perspective and automation perspective for their e-commerce uh, and being able to understand, you know, somebody's online ordering, you know, uh, a certain pair of Nikes uh, that they know where they're where they're available to go ahead and ship from closest to the customer, so they can get them to their end customer at the you know the the fastest amount of time. So, uh, additionally, for application prioritization for their existing applications, um, and then uh, create we were able to create um, you know active redundancies for all the network types, but also for their application routes. So this customer uh, is leveraging AWS as well as Microsoft Azure. So because of the, the direct um, 
private cloud access from the gateways that Keyshawn was talking about earlier in this, in this webinar, we are able to create those redundancies for them and those, those quick access points for them. Uh, additionally, I mentioned security. We deployed a firewall VNF from the edge, from that is to say from the VCE directly to uh, the internet. So that way they had um, a standardized architecture for all their branches uh, from a managed WAN and then a managed security. And that is a full, full, full firewall. We produced that from Palo Alto. So that's a Palo Alto uh, firewall VNF. Um, additionally, we deployed, we changed their voice strategy and we deployed uh, NHC UCAS as well as contact center. So contact center for their e-commerce uh, handling uh, as well as their overall commerce handling and their customer, their customer uh, touches and customer contacts uh, and then unified communication. So that way all the stores were uh, very scalable, easy to deploy, easy to replicate uh, and Functionally, their regional managers were able to be tied directly to the stores that they were that they were responsible for. So, so we established a standard uh, customer experience model for their end customer, um, and their store staff and mobile management uh, became completely unified. So, the result we we created a, a, a cloud on ramp for this customer for additional applications that they will need in the future as it relates to their security requirements. And, and different uh, management endeavors that they have relative to uh, the, the services that they were selling or the products rather that they were selling. We've reinvigorated the end customer's customer experience posture. Uh, that is to say, I, we improved their, our customer's customer's experience uh, by introducing the contact center uh, application and then in, ensuring that their applications were always up and that they were operating effectively uh, through the various redundancies that we created. We improved their customer user experience as a result of that. And then finally, we accelerated the deployment model for all their branch onboarding, which means that they can grow much faster and much easier. Uh, we're very proud uh, to be partnering with this customer as their communication stack provider around the country, across the country, and that is Roadrunner Sports. Uh, Roadrunner Sports, uh, you should buy all your shoes from them going forward. So I will conclude with this, that the reason why uh, these customers are choosing to go with NHC uh, for their SD-WAN is not just because of their SD-WAN. Their SD-WAN obviously is provided through us by, uh, powered by VeloCloud VMware, which is a fantastic product, uh, but we do it the best because we are network agnostic. So we can provide network connectivity from our network to the end customer site, as well as we can sell, manage, deploy, um, and support various resold network uh, connectivity options. So again, if you had a Comcast that was trying to solve for a nationwide deployment, um, selling their SD-WAN, there's going to be areas where they're not gonna be able to do that, either cost effectively or really support it at all. NHC is not that provider. NHC is a true nationwide network agnostic cloud uh, provider uh, that is providing a complete stack of communication tools to the end customer. That is a massive differentiator. And I will say as well that because we're doing these, these, these you know, we're, we're layering on our management service on all of our services, our management layer on all of our services, that doesn't make us the most expensive MSP out there either. Uh, that just means that we take our, our project management and our customer experience very seriously, uh, which causes our competitive churn to be the lowest in the market, I would argue, uh, less than a quarter of 1%. So customers choose to do business with us. Uh, they choose to keep their, businesses with, uh, their business with us. And partners choose to sell our services. They don't have to, but they choose to. Um, so with that, I appreciate everyone's time. I'm going to go ahead and hand it back off back over to the channel channel vision folks uh to carry on thank you very much for your time all right that was fantastic thank you very much uh both of you um at this point I'd like to open the floor up to, to uh q a so um please submit any questions through the q a uh, window at the bottom of the zoom platform here um i'm going to kick things off here and i'd like to talk about sales for a minute do you have any key tips or things to keep in mind when approaching customers and prospects about sd win What's really getting people's attention right now and driving sales? 
wondering if you have any, any key tips or, or things to keep in mind when approaching customers and, and prospects about SD-WAN. Uh, just wondering what's really getting people's attention in, in closing deals. Yeah, so that's a great question. I think generally from, from, from the NHC side, um, you know, we're, 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 we, we experience or we receive a bunch of different opportunities all the time you know, from the various channels that we sell through, right? Because we, are, we sell exclusively through the channel, through the independent channel. Uh, partner. We don't have a direct sales force. Uh, we're very proud of that. Um, so when the opportunities come in, generally we're seeing a kind of a, you know, we're able to, to, to get a, a holistic view of their overall challenges. So it's not just, oh, hey, this customer wants SD-WAN. It's more, hey, this customer has the following services and here's kind of an intro on what their challenges are. And normally, or really over the past 18 months, um, SDUN falls into a logical solution. And we, the two case studies that we showed were, you know, a single site customer and then a, mul a large multi site enterprise customer. Um, and SDUN really fits kind of the solution, is an is is easy solution for the edge uh, for any customer type. So um, I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to educate our partners that when they have a customer that, uh, or, or a customer contact or an opportunity that let's say they're just trying to displace their current access, their network connectivity. The question that I would always throw out there is great. That's awesome. Um, tell me about how you're managing your edge. Is it proactively managed? Do you know when you're up or down? Uh, do you want ban bandwidth aggregation? Um, the application types that you're throwing over those uh, network links, are they cloud-based or are they going to a you know private data center? I mean, you know, what's, what type of applications are you using and where are your pain points with those applications? Like how can we make those better in not just providing more bandwidth, but you know, possibly an edge discussion. So that's generally the way that the conversations go. And we've had a tremendous amount of success um, either informing the customer on SD-WAN, the benefits of it, kind of bring them into the know, or we get a lot of feedback in terms of, oh, I've heard of SD-WAN, tell me more about it. And the, the conversation just takes off, so. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, just a reminder here, if anybody else um, would like to submit a question, uh, the line is certainly open. So now is the time to do so. Um, Chris, um, earlier in the presentation, you spoke a little bit about uh, the customer experience, which um, I, I think is just so important in business today. I wonder if we could circle back to that a little bit um, and, and maybe expand on how NHC really goes above and beyond for the customer. Uh, maybe provide some more examples uh, and, just, and just kind of walk us through that a bit. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, from a, so from a company mission perspective, so Doug Fab, our CEO, um, every single staff meeting, he always starts with the importance of the customer experience. Like that, at the end of the day, is our goal. It's not, look, we're for profit, but he doesn't preach, hey, we need to add more revenue. We need to add more revenue. You know, how are sales? How are sales? Sales are great. We're adding revenue. That's awesome. But our focus really is that customer experience. And that because it's coming from the top and through Glenn Nelson partner and Steve Gibbs partner, um, you know, it's, it's going from the top down, it's trickling down. So every organization within the company uh, is focused on that customer experience because at the end of the day, without those customers, I mean, it's pretty easy, right? Without those customers, we're, 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 we're stagnant. We're not going anywhere. So, so that's the, just kind of throw that out there. So from a, from a company mission perspective, customer experience, the customer experience, um, is, is front and center of everything that we do. Now, as it relates to the customer, we're not simply talking about the billing customer. We're also talking about our, our channel partner customers because they are a customer. In fact, I would argue that they're our first customer. So, so for us to make certain that, A, we're trying to provide services that are relevant for our channel partners to be able to sell that help them solve solutions for their customers and therefore they then turn into our customers. Uh, that's that's a focus. So from a product development perspective and an engineering support perspective, uh, customer example that I would cite. Oh, and then additionally, uh, an additional point on the customer experience. Our escalation chain or escalation list are, from our executive side is very very short. It's literally entry into customer service and or the channel manager, uh, our VP of sales as well as our director and, and VP of operations, and then it goes right to the top uh, with Steve Gibbs and Glenn, Steve and, and, and Doug, who are our owners. Um, and that's it, right? I mean, that's a very, very short uh, escalation list for all of our customers. We have, 
you know, well north of 5,000 customers billing. We're, we're proud of that. Uh, a customer example that I would cite um, is a healthcare network out of the New York market uh, that is very large. Um, and we have a variety of their independent doctor locations as well as some of their surgical centers. Um, and Steve Gibbs, who is, I mean, he's a road warrior in general, so maybe it's not too much of a shock for anybody on this webinar that knows Steve Gibbs, but he is intimately involved with this account. Um, you know, whenever they need to talk on the executive level, he's down there, uh, you know, they have his cell phone number, he's on the phone with them. Uh, but also Steve Gibbs is, is very close with a very small SMB account uh, in Massachusetts that we've had as a customer since 2007. So the difference between the two obviously is huge in terms of revenue. You know, we're billing a lot for the enterprise health uh, network down in, in New York. We're billing a lot less revenue uh, per month with the small SMB up here in Massachusetts. But Steve is, 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 is more than welcome and more than happy to talk to or go meet with uh, either of those accounts at any time if there's ever any sort of a, a request for a meeting for good, bad, or, or, or just to discuss changes within their organization, Steve is there and as, as are the rest of our executives. Uh, so we're focused on the customer experience. It's not just what we're preaching, it's really what we're doing. Uh, and we try to deliver that through our project management experience and our service delivery experience. Um, and we're very proud of that. And, and, that all, and, and it also extends into the sales process too. Um, oh, absolutely. Yep. And yep. The customer through. Sure, sure does. Yep. Yep. Actually, just on that note, uh, Gerald, so uh, Eric Kammer, also a road warrior, um, probably the best sales guy I've ever met. He, uh, he's our VP of sales. It is, I mean, he is wheels up every week, um, going to meet with partners, meeting with partners he's already met with a billion times, meeting with their customers, meeting with large customers, small customers, it doesn't matter. He's happy to, you know, to, to hit the road and do that because, you know, it's the right thing to do. I mean, if we want to grow sales, we want to grow with our partners and we want to go ahead and, and show customers that they mean a lot pre-sale, but they also mean a lot post-sale and beyond, uh, we, do the, we do the work, so. Okay, um, I'd like to maybe, um, maybe shift um, into some of the more uh, the technical side here and uh, question through about, uh, about 5G. Um, you know, uh, we talked about uh, the transmission flowing over 3G and 4G and 5G is coming soon. What modifications may need to be made for, for customers in, in, in this uh, space? So, yeah, yeah. So I can take that and maybe I'll, I'll start it off. So if you look at sd WAN, typically it's agnostic to the underlying transport. So it's, you can run it over 3G, 5G, whatever wireless circuit, and you can run sd WAN overlays on top of it. So that's not a challenge. Now 5G though is a little different because with 5G you have um, really you know, a humongous amount of bandwidth and you have very low latency with it as well. So now what we our strategy is, well, why should we be completely agnostic? Can we basically integrate better with the underlay. So things like, uh, can we do segmentation of traffic within the 5G circuit? Uh, can we provide secure uh, capabilities of ensuring that uh, each of those traffic that goes through the 5G underlay uh, is better handled? So this is a couple of you know, high level examples, but yeah, sure. With 5G, I think we'll do a better work of not being completely agnostic, but kind of integrate with the underlay itself. But a 3G, 4G, it's another broadband circuit for us. Yeah, that and makes sense. Thank you, Sean. And from, a, from, a, from an NHC uh, delivery side of the 5G kind of network element, look, we don't have our own wireless network. We're not claiming to. We're very proud of the fact that we partner with a variety of wireless uh, providers, wireless network providers, Verizon Wireless, at and and so on. So as those providers bring on 5G and they actually bring it to the market, um, you know, as a consumable uh, product, you know, it's, it's, it's in our back and we're delivering it. So, um, you know, whether it's LTE today or if it's a region that has 5G now, like, you know, Minneapolis and so on, uh, we, you know, we're delivering that. Uh, as soon as it's officially brought to market, and there are devices that can handle the, um, you know, the the five G, five G network connection. Okay, great. Um, 
I think we still have time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, here's one more for you in, in regard to, uh, to your managed services, to NHE's managed services, voice and firewall security. How much work is typically involved in the customers and in terms of daily management there, or, or is it typically fully managed in the back end? Yep. Great question. So I mentioned during the slide, uh, during the managed uh, manage service slide that um, NHC is managing the service. We, we have to, we will, uh, and we're very transparent in that. It's up to the customer really if they want, how much visibility they choose to have and how much functionality they choose to manage within any service deployment. So and I'll give you, an, give you an example. So with our managed voice, our managed UCAS, you know, we're rolling a truck regardless uh, for any sort of edge equipment or land equipment. Uh, we're configuring, we're training, and we're showing them um, how to access into the comm portal to make changes to the users, manage users, view reports, analytics, and so on, as well as manage call recordings and, and et cetera. Uh, how to manage their applications and so on, how to download them and use them. And we'll continue to do that. We'll always do that and we'll communicate with them when there's some sort of a network event or if there's you know, loss of QS or whatever the case is. If the customer chooses, they can continue to access into that comm portal to look at the analytics or they can reach out to NHC and, and we can go ahead and, and do those things for them. So it's really up to the end customer. Uh, we don't have various layers of uh, managed services. If it's a managed data component, a law managed plan, an SD-WAN, you know, we are proactively working for that customer, working with that customer on the network configuration, the network health, and then monitoring and notification uh, thereafter. So if the customer is sophisticated enough, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but if they're sophisticated enough uh, and uh, efficient enough at managing a network, then we will give them access into, uh, into the, the VCO, as Keyshawn had, had explained earlier, the VCO stands for the Bell Cloud uh, orch Orchestrator or Orchestration Plan. We'll give them uh, writable access into that uh, so that way they can make network changes and so on and configure changes. Although they don't have to, our default access into that is a read only and that is simply to prevent uh, customers or end customers by accidentally making a network configuration change that's gonna take down their network. Uh, but we will train them, we will show them uh, and they can gain access into that. But that is to the extent, that's the extent of of their preference. We will be managing, configuring, notifying, monitoring, uh, whatever service it is that they're subscribing to. And hopefully it's a service from the entire stack. Okay, um, I think at this point we're approaching the top of the hour here. So I just wanna say um, thank you for everyone. Um, I think that'll wrap up the webinar today. Big thank you to the NHC and VMware SD-WAN by VeloCloud Teams, to Chris and Keith John for their great presentation. And of course, to all of you for tuning in today. Just a reminder to check your inbox as we'll be announcing the winners of our Amazon gift card giveaway. And for more information about NHC, please visit uh, nhcgrp.com. Again, nhcgrp.com. We'll see you next time.